Good morning, afternoon, evening. I'm here to talk to you about uh, my classes retrial of Louis Riel and Louis Riel in general. My name is Rachel Hers, and I'm in the 10th grade. So the first thing I'm going to be talking to you about today is my role in the trial. I was a representative of the Crown, and therefore I was the prosecutor who was prosecuting Louis Riel for his crime of high treason. Um, for my role in the retrial, all I really had to do was go through every single witness's uh, transcript and choose the questions I was going to ask as the prosecutor, so in first examination from most of the witnesses, and then as the prosecutor in cross-examination for the witnesses which were presented by the defense. And so this was a lot of work but it was actually really helpful for me to get a good idea of the full picture of the trial and how there were a lot of different um, perspectives in the trial and how not all the Metis were following Louis Riel and not everyone thought he was a bad person at the time. Um, so it was really good for painting a clear picture and I really tried to pick out the questions that could help other people in the class who are witnesses and watching the trial um, just kind of understand what was going on on a larger scale. Um, and the other thing I had to do was to take down the other um, team's arguments uh, and that was that Louis Riel was insane and that's why he cannot be held criminally responsible for his actions. Um, but yeah, so I did that in my closing statement and my partner did the opening statement and she helped with some of the questioning. My partner was Taylor, by the way. <laughs> and so the second thing I want to talk to you about is the verdict of our trial. Now, in the original trial, Louis Riel was found guilty. And so I think why maybe at the time he was found guilty was, well, there were a mixture of reasons, of course. Um, so there was, like, a lack of solid evidence from the defense. And so I found this when I was cross-examining the witnesses, that two of their key witnesses were claiming that because, well, one of them was claiming that Louis Riel was insane because he believed in God, and then the defense actually asked in our trial a really nice question, so do you believe religion can call it, cause insanity? And of course, to which Father Alexis Andre, who's their witness, answered yes. And so I think at the time that could have been seen as really insulting, um, which it definitely is because not everyone with religion is insane. Um, and there was just a general lack of solid evidence. So one of the doctors they brought up was not a specialist in uh, insanity and was also, or hadn't seen the witness in over seven years, which is a long time and a lot can change. Um, and so I think that the reason in the actual trial, uh, aside from like just the evidence, uh, the reason would be that know, where the trial was held, who the jurors wore, were, which were um, white or uh, Anglo-Saxons. Um, there was just a lot that was going against Louis Riel at the time, and they could the defense couldn't build a solid case. But in our trial, aside from having the same evidence, I think we, well, my team lost the trial, I guess, um, in part because we picked sides based on what we had been doing in the trial. So my witnesses saw Louis Riel as guilty. The defense witnesses saw Louis Riel as not guilty. Um, and so that's kind of what happened. But I think that we also understand with a different perspective the situation. Um, and so at the time, while there was a lot of hatred um, from the jurors uh, towards the Métis, um, in our trial, we saw Louis Riel through a modern perspective and that he was the defender of the little man, which we often see as being the hero. And so we had, and we also had some information that at the time wasn't available and that we were thinking about when we were making our decisions. So that could have played a role um, in why we didn't win the trial. <laughs> Um, personally, I was conflicted myself on whether I thought Louis Riel was insane or not, because there's definitely some stuff 
say he's insane, but there's also a lot to indicate that he's the type of insane that can be held criminally responsible. Um, because not everyone who's insane can't be held criminally responsible. Um, and the third thing I want to talk to you about today is whether Louis Riel was a martyr. And so, a martyr by definition, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, is a person killed because of their religious or other beliefs. Now, based on the definition, I find it hard to call Louis Riel a martyr um, for all the Met Métis people. For Definitely for some, he was um, the martyr for the Manitoban or Métis, Métis people. Um, and so definitely to some extent, he was their religious leader. They were deeply religious people, and he was uh, their leader in many ways. And he was their symbol of hope for the future and for equality and for some different rights. But based on him being killed solely because of his religious or other beliefs, I don't think he was killed solely because of that. I mean, he did lead armed rebellion multiple times. He executed uh, Thomas, or he had Thomas Scott executed, which was... Um, a mistake in how he can be seen because that was definitely had a huge negative effect on his image. Um, and so I don't think he represented everyone's uh, religious beliefs. Um, the, he did, uh, according to various witnesses in the trial, change his beliefs a lot. Not all the Métis were with him. So just overall, seeing Louis Riel as a martyr for the Manitoban, or, sorry, Métis people, um, it's difficult to uh, exact, I guess, because he's definitely the champion of what we would call human rights for the Métis people, um, but he wasn't necessarily their religious champion. I think there were several other people who were religious leaders for Riel and for the other Métis people. And so the last thing I want to talk to you about is whether or not Louis Riel was a hero or a villain. And so we did our annotated bibliographies uh, based on this question, essentially. And we were to look at what Louis Riel did and how various sources would report on his actions. And so I kind of wanted to find hero. And so for me, in my belief and in like a general sense of the word. A hero is the good guy, and a hero is the champion of the little guy. So he's the one who defends the little guy's rights, so the minority's rights, even if the majority can be against him. And so I think that's definitely like a really brave cause. And like to what Louis Riel did do with this is he had a noble cause, um, in essence, and that was at the time, given the circumstances of the Anglophones, um, he wanted to ensure the rights of the Métis could be protected and that they would be seen as equals and that they could keep their land, which they, which was a major problem because the Anglo-Saxons, um, Anglophone uh, settlers, uh, took the land because originally they hadn't um, sorted, they didn't have the land um, given out with deeds, and so people didn't necessarily legally, in the eyes of the British, um, own the land. Um, and so he did try to do many things originally in a proper manner. He did engage in no negotiations with the um, British government, or Canadian government at the time. Um, he drew up the list of rights for the Métis people. And, but, but the problem is he did a lot of things that damaged reputation and that damaged how he was perceived. And so in our trial, according to various witness testimonies, um, he used violence and force to make people join his cause. He was not the nicest guy. He threatened people. He wanted people executed. Um, and he captured people without good reason, essentially. And another huge mistake he made was or having Thomas Scott ex executed, and this was done without proper trial. This was just done with so many mistakes and so little uh, propriety um, in the process that it was, it's something definitely for me that was a huge 
uh, problem with his character. And according to witness testimony, Thomas Scott wasn't the only guy uh, Louis Riel wanted executed. And although the British government didn't, or the Canadian government, which was largely composed of people of British origin, um, they saw this as a huge threat to their beliefs, and while they cleared him of it, it's only something that hurt him in his trial for high treason. And so, I guess we have to look at the bigger picture of what he did, and we have to understand the term hero as being someone who is a champion for the little guy. In this case, the little guy was the Métis people, and while not all of the Métis were behind Louis Riel, a solid portion of them were. Um, at least originally. Um, and so I guess Louis Riel could be a hero if he was a slightly deranged one. Um, not all heroes are perfect. Everyone makes mistakes. Louis Riel, Louis Riel's mistakes were, uh, pretty bad. But at the end of the day, I think he really did have a good cause, even if he was, you know, insane. And he didn't execute everything properly. So... That's basically it. To recap, I was the representative of the Crown in the retail of Louis Riel. Uh, our verdict was not guilty, although I had torn feelings about both the verdict in our retrial and about the verdict in the real trial back in the in 1885 or 1886, kind of both. Um, he was a martyr for the Manitoban people. Uh, but again, there's some confusion here based on definitions, or not the Manitoban people, the Métis people, many of whom were Manitoban. And Louis Riel is a hero based on the definition that a hero is someone who defends the little guy. So that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something either about my opinions or about Louis Riel. And I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.